Sometimes it's the small things that can enhance your data visualization. For example, take a look at this bar chart. It shows you data on some fictitious survey and how many people responded yes to a given question. There isn't that much critique about this bar chart, but what would be neat here if we could signal that the bars that we see here are actually part of a whole. This means that we could add gray bars on top of our current bars to show that the scale goes from 0 to 100%. This way we would have signaled that all of those percentages that we see are of course only a part of 100%. And the nice thing about this is that you can visually see if something goes over say 50% if the majority of people have said to a given question. Of course you could still add a 50% line but the nice thing about these parts of a whole charts is that people often can tell without these extra guidance if something is larger than some other group. And in this video I'm going to show you how you can build all of this with R. In R Studio, I've already set up a quarto document with one code chunk that contains our data here. It's a fake data set that I've just generated in the way you see here. Basically it's a table that was set up using the triple function that helps you to write data sets into this nice readable format instead of having to write it into vectors. In any case, that's how our data looks. Now let's throw this to ggplot to make a nice bar chart out of this. So we take our data set and pass it to ggplot where we of course have to specify the aesthetics. In this case, on the y-axis, we want to have the question label. So we will have these questions here and the x-axis is mapped to the yes rate column, which contains the proportion of how many people said yes to a given question. And then we add a GM call layer and then we specify that the fill color of our bar should be this bluish color. And that way we get a bar chart, but we should probably also add some labels to this. So that is why we add a labs layer where we make sure that the X and Y axis actually don't have a label because we don't need that. Instead, we can throw all of this information into the title, how many people say yes to these questions. And then using some tricks that we learned a couple of weeks ago, we can add a fee minimal layer and increase the base size and the base family. That way we have a minimal theme, so no gray background and the text actually get larger so that we can read a thing. Additionally, we throw in a theme layer where we move the plot title to the left and also we get rid of a couple of extra grid lines that are in there. And finally, we want to make sure that on the X axis we have percent labels in there. So we have to modify the scale X continuous layer and we do so by mapping the labels argument to the label percent function from the scales package. Don't forget that you have to use these parentheses here because this scale labels percent function, if you execute it like this, will give you a function that does the transforming later on. And this is what the labels argument wants to have. And that way we have neatly formatted percent labels on the X axis. Now notice that our bars are not sorted in ascending order and just like we've learned a couple of weeks ago, this is a good idea to have things on your chart sorted and that's why we add a mutate call to modify our data set in which we target the question column to reorder it using the FCT reorder function that takes the question column as an argument and the yes rate column as an argument to indicate how the values should be sorted namely according to the values that are in this yes rate column. And once we execute this, we have a nicely formatted bar chart. Cool, that's our bar chart. Now let's add the gray parts. To do so, we first have to calculate how large the gray part should be for each question. So let's just take this part here that we have anyway. And in there, let me just move all of this up a little bit so that you can see better. And in there, we compute the no rate by simply doing one minus the yes rate. And that way we get this data set here. Now, as you can see, we have two columns here that correspond to the different rates. But what ggplot will need is one column that has only yes and no in it and another column that has all of the values in it. Therefore, we need to rearrange this data set. And this is another trick we have learned just a couple of weeks ago. If you recall, all of this is done with pivot longer, where we tell pivot longer which columns we want to rearrange. In this case, this is everything but the question column. Then we need to tell pivot longer where we want to put in these column names. In this case, we simply put this to a new column that we call answer. And then we have to pick out the yes and no from the current column names using this regular expression. If you don't understand this part, then don't worry. You can read up on all of these things via the blog post that we link in the description of this video. But for now, let's just move on to rearrange our data. This means that we also have to specify where we want to map the values to. And then if we execute all of this, we can see 
that we have a nicely rearranged data set. So let's save this data set into a new variable. And with this new variable, we can basically take our code from before. Let's just get this ggplot stuff here. Complementary rates is passed to our code from before. But we have to make sure that the fill aesthetic is now mapped to this new column. So fill is mapped to answer. And also our x column is not called yes rate anymore. It is called percentage. So let's replace this part here. And then we should be sort of good to go. Ah, one thing we of course have to remove is this specific fill color. Otherwise everything will have the same color. And now we get a bar chart that has something stacked on top of it. Of course, this isn't exactly what we're going for. So let's for now get rid of the legend. Let's put legend position to none. This way we have removed the legend. And now all that is left to do is to modify the colors here. In this case, this means that we're going to use a scale fill manual layer. And in there we can specify the values argument via a vector that gets all the colors that we want to add in there. And in this case, we only want to really have a nice color for the yes part here. So let's say yes should get the color from before. That is this hex code. Let's stick this in there. And then we can see that we have grayed out the part that we wanted to have gray, but it's a very dark gray. So let's modify this gray color by specifying the missing value. So this is the color that the scale fill manual is supposed to use when we didn't specify a color like for no here. We only specified it for yes. So in this case, maybe something like gray 60, uh, still pretty strong, maybe gray 80. Something like this. And now we could also add a vertical line at the 50% mark here to indicate when there are more yes than no answers. So let's throw in a GM V line at the 0.5 X intercept with a gray 20 color. This would give us a solid line, but maybe a dash line here is better. So let's use line type is two. Nice, we have completed our parts of a whole bar chart. I hope that you enjoyed this. Let us know in the comment if you did. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments as well. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.